today I'm going to do something a bit different. If you have been uh, studying my stuff, looking at my stuff, in order to better understand your human design, this video is more about working with the things that are in the way of you living your design. Um, now, it's no secret that I am a very big fan of deconditioning. So being willing to meet the things that are happening within your body, the thoughts, the emotions, the sensations, um, so that you can actually live your design. Because if we're not willing to or able to come into our body slowly, gently to feel the feelings, <laughs> then it's almost impossible to live our design. So if you're already on board with that concept, um, you'll also probably know that as a, a certified EFT practitioner and somebody who's been tapping for many, 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 many years, um, I am a big fan of tapping in order to be able to do that deconditioning process. Now, what I want to do is tell you a very short story and then help uh, allow you to see how I walk myself through that process. Now, uh, a little bit of backstory. I have had a chronic um, digestive health issue for a very long time. Uh, in my late 20s, I experienced a, uh, a trauma watching somebody else go through something horrific. Um, and I came back from that trip um, overseas with a tummy bug that was the beginning of a very long journey back into my body and working out how to not hate it so much and actually love it through this process um, of all the things that it's been through. So um, it goes in, I, I, I learn different things. Tapping has been incredibly helpful, changes to my diet, different supplements, working on my circadian rhythm. So I have layered in lots and lots of things in that 15 years or whatever it's been since I came back from that trip. And just in the last week, because I really stretched myself, I really tried to do some much bigger things than I have had the capacity to do for a long time. So as I've improved my nervous system capacity, I've pushed up against my edges and go, okay, now what can I do? Now with this increased capacity, can I go do this big trip? Can I go skiing for a week? Well, I could, <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, but it was, I also found my edge, right? And so the amazing progress I'd made with my digestive health has it has hit a snag, right? And so it's like, okay, well, what are what are my other options? Like, where else can I gain support? You know, tapping is is one beautiful way to do this. Um, sort of this unburdening, um, letting go of the old. But there's no one tool that is a solution for everything. Sometimes we need to be willing to pull in multiple things. Just like human design isn't the one solution. It's, it's why I put human design and tapping together because it works so much better when we pair some things together. So I decided to go to an acupuncturist that lives very close to us uh, when I had talked about some of the challenges I'd had, my partner had invited me to consider going to the acupuncturist he'd been to. Um, he's like, just try it. Very third line of him. Just give it a go. See if it makes a difference. Uh, so I did. I went yesterday and it was disappointing. <laughs> Not that I think acupuncture isn't in theory brilliant. Um, I couldn't work with tapping if I didn't believe that there was this flow of energy and meridian channels running through the system because they're, you know, the the tapping component of EFT or um, uh, all the different versions are based on tapping on those meridian points um, that are used in traditional Chinese medicine and in acupuncture. Um, but sometimes the tool, <laughs> in fact, all the time, the, the amount of effectiveness of the tool is heavily impacted by that the person who wields the tool. So if you have a really embodied, um, aware, awake practitioner wielding the same tool and the same knowledge of how to like use that tool, um, the, the difference in outcome can be profound, right? So I have been, as my nervous system capacity has increased, I have been slowly working on some anger. I was a very good girl for a very long time. I'm not so much anymore. <laughs> and as I have found, I have, have had the capacity to be able to work with some of that anger. I couldn't have done this work a year or five years or heaven forbid, 10 years ago, um, but I've slowly worked towards it. So now my anger is shoving up all over the place, right? 
And it was easily triggered by this guy yesterday. So there were several things, but I'll give you one example. Um, as he worked on my system, he declared that my diet was, was uh, not ideal and that it was causing more issues. And I could just feel all this anger rise in me. And I was like, okay, I'm hearing you. Got it. It took all of my willpower to just be like, try and be polite so that I didn't tear his head off. Now, it's easy when other people trigger us to go, they made me feel, right? So I really want you to notice as you have things triggered for you, and it doesn't matter what emotion it is, in this case, it's my anger, but it could be sadness or shame by any of the names, embarrassment, humiliation, um, anything, guilt, uh, fear, they made me feel, right? So as I let that part of me speak, it wants to say, he made me feel angry, right? Um, in truth, what he did is he triggered old anger, right? Now, what he doesn't know is that I spent most of my childhood and teenage years on a very strict diet that is another story for another time. Um, and I still have, I discovered, was reminded yesterday, I still have so much anger about being put on this really restrictive diet when my siblings were allowed to eat all the same foods right in front of me. You can imagine how that would make somebody angry, right? Now, notice that as I'm telling you this, I can feel these little surges of anger show up. And so, again, as you find yourself telling stories to anybody, your partner, your friend, your therapist, anybody, where you feel safe to start tapping, and you could tap on any of the points, but obviously it's a bit weird telling a story and tapping on the top of your head, unless you're in a session with me where you're tapping, and then I'm going to probably suggest you do that. But you can tap on any of the points as you're telling this story. Obviously, the least distracting ones are not going to be these ones on the front of the face. But already, see how much of a difference it's making as I tap? That I was just willing to meet that anger within me and tap. And then the body wanted to spontaneously take a breath. And I already feel calmer. And that's what we're going for here. We're not going to like solve all the problems of all the world. I'm not going to like release all of my anger about all the things all in one conversation, right? With a camera. Hi, camera. <laughs> Hello, you on the other side of the camera. Um, but what I am going to do and what I want you to do is to see that if you're already talking about things that are triggering you, that are upsetting you, you're remembering the conversation with the person yesterday where they said the thing. If it bothers you, start tapping. And the whole goal really is just to feel better. That's all we want. We actually just want to feel better, right? That's what we're after. We're after relief. So you can tap the points under the arm, the liver point, which is below the nipples. You can tap, or I like to rub on the finger points because it's like more convenient than doing this, right? Um, finger points are great. And this is what's brilliant. Right now I'm like, so where was I up to? Well, if you can't remember what was bothering you, that's a great side. <laughs> a great sign and so if you as you're tapping on something that bothers you notice that you can't remember what it was or you're suddenly like bored like I don't need to be doing this tapping great you're done <laughs> you can like move on to the next part of the conversation or you can get on to the next job on your to-do list because you feel better right so that's how simple it is Yes, I know that if I go back to that conversation with the acupuncturist, I can find more parts. Let me go and see if I can find some more aspects to show you how I would do this more comprehensively. Again, this is a process I walk myself through, um, but and you can walk yourself through. Like This is the point of me shoot, shooting this video so that you can start to layer in some things of how to do this on your own. Um, of course, you can do this in session with me. I can do it in a, a little more structured way so that you can see how to do this work on your own and then you'll be more well equipped to be able to go away and move through things on your own. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want me to teach you. 
but this is just an example. So if I go back to see me looking up, looking at my looking for my memories, he's making these suggestions about how I have to change my diet. And I can find this aspect that says, like, I have done so much on my diet, and this guy has no fucking idea how much I have done on my diet of trying to improve my diet. And so as soon as for me, usually when I get sweary uh, telling my own stories, that's a good sign that I'm angry, right? And you can find the right words or you can just, if you're telling this story back to yourself, if you're remembering it, if you're telling the story to someone else, you can just do what Steve Wells calls continuous tapping um, one of my many, many tapping mentors, um, and just tap or rub the finger points um, as you're noticing what you're feeling because what's happening is this stuff is rising to the surface and then we just want to let it go if it's ready to go, if we're ready to feel it, if it doesn't need to be in the system anymore. So noticing how you feel. You know, the part of me that felt like you, buddy, have no clue, no clue how much I've already done on improving my diet and how dare you <laughs> tell me that I need to improve my diet some more. Like, how dare you? I wanted to strangle it. So I just noticed right now the part of me, of course I wouldn't do it. I'm not interested in harming people. But what I do want to do, what I want to encourage you to do, is allow yourself to feel the fact that you want to strangle the person. Because this is how we reduce violence. Truly. We allow ourselves to feel the fact that we want to hurt someone else because they've triggered so much old anger that was there before I met him. It has nothing to do with him. Very important. That thing that's been triggered for you by someone else was there before you met them. They've just helped you find it. You might not like them for it, but they've helped you find it. And it is best for you and that other person and the rest of your community if you have the capacity to do this. So as long as it doesn't feel overwhelming, like my system is pretty robust at this point. So I can feel this desire to want to strangle this guy and just work with it in my system. And that's what happens as you slowly do more and more and more tapping within your capacity. Because the ideal is that I can feel that and allow it to move through my system. So then the charge is gone. So then I no longer feel like there is a part of me that wants to hurt somebody else because I feel so hurt, yeah? So this is an example of working with anger, a little bit disjointed maybe, but hopefully you've been able to stay with me and notice that, you know, I can probably go back. Let's see if I can do one more example. So I'm going to pause for a minute. So I'm thinking about the session yesterday and I'm thinking about this guy. It's very interesting because I can see myself like looking for the problem and I'm like I'm struggling to find it, right? Now, this has not been a very uh, specific, deep, focused um, tapping session. Not at all, as you've seen, right? I've literally walked you through what I'm doing. Um, but it, what it has been is a willingness to notice how I feel and meet the part of me that's feeling what she's feeling. So I'm going to just see if I can find any more anger, specifically around the food stuff, because I know that there was anger around other things that happened in that session, um, he was not unprofessional or did anything quote unquote wrong, um, but he did and said things that triggered a whole bunch of anger for me. Um, so food, I can find the part of me that says, dude, my diet is so much fucking better than so many other people in this community why are you picking on me, right? So that's interesting. So that aspect is about feeling like he's picking on me 
when I already perceive that I'm doing better than so many other people when it comes to my diet. And actually, if I get curious, I bet underneath that anger is a whole lot of grief and hurt and sadness of like, why are you picking on me? It sounds very victim-like, yeah? So that's what I'm noticing as I'm tapping. And your ability to be able to like observe your own patterns and things as they come out of your mouth, if this seems very um, uh, like complicated or advanced, um, it's only it, it, it you will develop that over time, yeah? So if you can't do that, if you can't like notice all of those things, then you just work with what is now. You work with the part of you that's like, I'm angry. And then if there is that sadness underneath and you've sufficiently cleared that anger, the sadness will show up. There can be multiple layers of things here and there can be so many memories that are triggered to so many old things. So how do you, how do you know you're done? Well, you feel better. That's a good time to stop. You might be out of time or you might get interrupted. You might have somewhere else that you need to be. And so that's a good time to just like reconnect to your environment and feel your feet on the floor or your, you know, thighs or your bum on the chair. Um, you could feel your hands on your face if that feels good. Hear the birds. I can hear birds outside and I might be reconnecting with my immediate environment. I can look at myself on the screen instead of at the camera and go, oh, look, there she is. Hello, beauty. And I can run my hands through my hair and feel the quality, like get really, really, really here and now. Yeah. So you might feel better. You might be out of time. If you feel better, there's nothing to do because if you feel better, you're probably pretty um, safe and grounded to be able to go and like re-enter your day much better than when you were triggered um, to be able to productively and um, kindly move through the world. Um, but if you're out of time, you might need to just take one minute to reconnect with your immediate environment um, or come back to the exact task at hand. Give your 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 mind something very specific to focus on that feels good. Um, and the other thing that could happen is in this process, you might find um, that you have a different experience than me, that you actually find things that are too big and too overwhelming. And if you do, please stop. As soon as you notice, if that happens, stop. And do what you need to do to come back to something much smaller much um that feels really safe for you and it doesn't have to be something else to tap on it could be like looking at <laughs> the fact that I have this laptop pr uh, propped up with a book that says Chinese acupuncture <laughs> <laughs> and realizing how hilarious that is that that's what I've got the laptop um set up on when I didn't even realize it, right? You can have something that brings you so um, so focused and so um, so focused on something that feels good and small that's completely different from your tapping that it uh, that allows you to like feel really safe again. Yeah. So it's really important that you take care of yourself in this process um, and you do what you need to do to slowly gently start to move through these triggers as they get triggered by life this guy meant to serve me support me help me help me heal he didn't mean to I am sure of it he didn't mean to trigger stuff that started for me when I was like age four I'm sure he didn't but as human beings we bump into each other we trigger each other, we upset each other, and our responsibility, if we're going to live into the power and beauty of what we're here to do, as shown on our human design chart, we need to be willing to little bit, little bit, little bit, slowly, slowly, slowly meet the parts of us that are feeling all the things <sighs> and just bring our loving presence and maybe our tapping fingers <laughs> to how we're feeling. So that then 
later today, tonight, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. We can step into even more alignment with who we are. More resources below every video um, if you like. There's a lot more short form content on this channel, so feel free to have a click around. You can subscribe and tap the bell if you want to be emailed when there's new videos. Um, but otherwise, have a, have a look around on the channel and in the description below this video for more resources. And bye for now.